Welcome to ETH British Cars. So today we're going to try and assemble the three bits of the transmission. That's the main body, the overdrive unit, and the top cover. So I'm starting with the overdrive unit and it's on the workbench now, so let's get started there. Well first we're going to have to assemble the springs into the front of the overdrive unit. And these are actually two kinds of springs. It's hard to tell, but these are long springs and short springs, and you can see there, I don't even think a quarter of an inch difference. The big difference is if you look, the thickness of these coils, they're substantially thicker than these. So these go on these eight pins, and the, sh the th shorter, thinner spring goes on the inner post, the thicker one goes on the outer. And they just sit in there like that. In addition, you need to put, this is the, the cam that drives the overdrive pump. You'll notice that there's a thin side, this is a thick side that's eccentric because that's what makes the pump function. And you basically want to put it with the thin side towards the plunger, which in this case, because the transmission is upside down, is thin side spacing up, and you don't want to push it all the way home. Now the difficult part about this, well two, one is these things are heavy, but also you're going to have to get these splines to engage, and you'll be pushing against the spring tension all the time. So you just got to, you notice there's two longer screws on the overdrive unit. They go through here and there, and you can draw them in slowly. So you're going to want to sort of draw them in and keep turning the, uh, the planetary unit. You can grab the tail shaft and turn that. And it will, quote, click in. Now, I did, prior to turning the camera on, without the springs, without the overdrive cam, fitted this unit on to make sure everything was in alignment because it is possible to have the female spline, which these fit into, be off center. So I put it on just to make sure that everything was aligned and it wasn't going to be bound up that way. So it's going to be a delicate operation because it'd be really easy to bugger something up because you can get a lot of pressure on these. All right, so we're going to fit it on and then you'll notice there's eight pins on the back of this adapter plate and that aligns with these eight springs. You need to make sure that the springs are on the little nubs as you put them in. So, let's get started. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a gasket in here too, just to make life a little bit more exciting. So, here's a gasket. I'm going to take a minute, put a little gasket cement on there. And, and then just we'll one other quick note. While this gasket will fit over the studs, Either way, there's only one correct way. If you look, this hole and that hole, as far as the edge of the gasket, don't line up, and that's because this leg is about 3 sixteenths of an inch offset. So you just want to make sure you put it around the right way on your studs. Use it. All right. So now the fun part. So we'll pick this up. <laughs> it over the end of the shaft, bring it in, and this is where you start to play with those uh, springs. So the short ones hit first, and that's because the uh, pockets in the transmission or the overdrive are different lengths, so the long springs when it comes to this, are actually shorter, just to keep things clear as mud. And as you can see, this is not moving, and that's because, there, that was the uh, splines engaging into the planetary set, so I'm just going to put a screw, one of these shafts is a tiny bit longer than the other one so the one on the one you can't see um, 
engage us first. And now we're going to night get this a bit closer. I'm only compressing it just by pushing it for starters. And we're starting to go against those springs. I just saw the main shaft start moving. And my bolts closed up about an eighth of an inch or so. It's just enough to get that nut started. And that one. Now, those eight springs create a lot of force. I'm not sure you can, I doubt very much you could actually compress those by hand. So we'll just wind on this really easily. And I'm still spinning the tail shaft just to make sure everything's moving. One good sign is, is that as I take it up, it's pulling this thing up pretty square. You can actually see the other bolt moving along. See, I can turn that with my fingers now. Let's keep alternating sides here and just keep spinning that thing. Eventually, we're going to have to push the, uh, the piston up and over the cam. You should note, this is an extra overdrive main shaft to have. This is actually for a J drive overdrive, which has fine splines, whereas this A type has the coarse splines, but for the sake of showing, this will work. So the first thing we did was engage the splines into the hub of the planetary gear set. The other thing we have to do is get this pin to align into the bushing. It's in the back of the gearbox too. So that's one of the reasons I put it together to dry because that's what gets out of a line is the splines can actually move this way. The splines in the sun gear can move a little bit and be out of alignment with the pin. That's why I wanted to check that alignment first because if you were a shop, you would have an extra A-type overdrive main shaft laying around and you could just do it without using the transmission, which would be much easier. So, this is getting really close, and I don't think you're going to be able to see. If you look down this gap, you can see the springs, and if you look, I'm not sure it's going to show on the camera, but you will see the cam, and then directly under this brass plug is that plunger. So what we're going to want to do before this gets closed up, you reach in with two screwdrivers. The one screwdriver, you try to grab the end of that plunger and push it up. The second screwdriver, you can grab the back of the cam and push it after that first one's pulled up. So they're touching right now. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to bother to film that because you're not going to see anything and it's going to take a while. I doubt that you can see that, but that cam is now pushed back flush against the face, that face, which is the planetary system. And now we should be able to draw that in. So I used two screwdrivers, had a big one in from the top here to move the, uh, the cam, and a thin one coming in from the side right over here where that, the top of this, there's a, like a ledge right there that ends, came in through there, got underneath it and pushed it up and there's just enough room between that screwdriver and the cam to get it in. So now we'll go back to tightening. Well, first off, this is still moving, so that's good. Now we can go back to tightening this. So I suppose if somebody wants to ask, I did that. The overdrive is about five eighths of an inch away from the back of the transmission. 
So I'll go back to tightening. Typically now we're getting closer to the end. Don't want to go too much on one side at a time. Try to draw them up equally. Keep checking that the tail shaft is moving. If you only feel it moving in one direction, that means that it, the plant's not spinning. You're actually just... You can't turn it against the sprawl clutch, but you can turn it with the sprawl clutch. So if it locks up, that could be an issue. So that just got very tight, which tells me that's where the uh, the bump on the main shaft is. So let's draw this up a little at a time. It's getting tight. I'm turning, I'm literally turning these things like one flat at a time because it feels very, very tight. Tail shaft's getting hard to turn too. I snug it up that little bit and it just gets the tiniest bit easier. But these don't really seem to be, the two nuts don't seem to be getting any easier. Well, I ran into a problem trying to put it together and that was I couldn't get it to go the last three quarters of an inch or so. And I think it would go together dry, but it wouldn't go together with all the, the all these springs in. And what was happening was the end of this shaft was catching on. There's a little sleeve bushing at the bottom of the clutch. So when it was no springs, this thing would wobble enough that it would get it in. But with the springs in place, it wouldn't let it go. So what it did, I took um, my four-inch grinder and I just chamfered this edge a bit more than it was. So I'm going to try and put that together now and hopefully it'll all be good. So as you can see, that went together quite well. So the easiest thing I found was to assemble the overdrive onto the back of the transmission while the transmission was laying horizontally on this work surface with the cover, open cover facing down so it's nice and flat. That allowed me to push it in, line up my springs, push it a little bit further just holding onto the bell housing and pushing with my stomach get these nuts started, uh, did those up a little bit, and then I pushed the, uh, the cam underneath the plunger and tightened it up a bit more until I felt it stop, and it was stopped in the same space that it had been for quite a while. I rotated it up so it was vertical, sitting on these two blocks of wood, and then just put these just snug. I mean, you can tell when you're pulling against the spring because that's really easy, but when it starts to tighten up, you've hit something. I gave this about a half a turn. It went pop. That tail shaft slid into that bushing and it pulled right down. No problem. So the only other problem I had, I found that as I went around, this would bind up in the same spot for just about 10 degrees of motion. And what it is, is that's the bottom of the plunger. You can see it going up and down here was running into the stop. So I don't know whether I missed that there was a washer on here or because it's a new plunger, it's a little bit longer. I don't know. My answer was I just put a little copper washer on and that's going to give it the clearance that it needs and of course we'll lock hide it in. So now I need to go through, put the other bolts in, other nuts in, lock tight them and then I'll put the, take the, once these ones are secure, I can undo these ones again and put lock washers and lock tight and all that good stuff. And then we'll go on to the top cover. All right, so we're ready for the top cover. So this gasket goes with this tab facing the overdrive. And you see a little notch there. It goes on the right side because that's for the uh, oil dipstick on this transmissions that have that. So we'll put a little gasket cement on both sides. One thing you want to make sure is that this is the reverse 
lever that it is engaged in that little slot and then these are the main gears those go down in these two bigger slots here so let's get that first off we'll get the shifter forks into their notches and then get that lined up that's the reverse notch so that it'll go in try not to muck up the gasket And then we'll get, just got to put the top cover bolts in. Huh? That'll do it for today. I have to say, I really took a long time to figure out why those two halves weren't going together, the overdrive and the main transmission, because of that small taper on the end of the shaft. I suppose when the transmission was new and the overdrive was new, the shaft stayed stationary enough that it didn't matter. But, you know, it's 50-something years old. And it's got that little bit of extra play and it allowed it just to get far enough up on the flat that it wouldn't push in. So when uh, I did that little bit of grinding and I put it together the same way I had been, I just started to feel a little tension on the bolts. I twisted the uh, tail shaft, quarter of a turn, and pop, it went in. After that, it just pulled on down and no problems whatsoever. So with, I wish somebody had told me about that but it saved me a bunch of time. So don't forget, you may have to, just took a grinding wheel on my four inch grinder and just about doubled the size of that taper, which there's still plenty of bearing surface, so not to worry about that. So that's it for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll see you next time.